Hey guys, Omar here, and today I'm trying the hardest type of photography I've ever done. Today we're uh, trying our hand at bird photography, and if you've never tried bird photography, don't. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. Now today I'm using the 100 to 400 lens. Look at this beast. Uh, a huge thank you to our friends at B&H who hooked us up with the 100 to 400 to try out for a couple of weeks. They support this little channel, so we thank them. Shop at B&H. Tell them Omar sent you. Now one thing about bird photography is it's one thing to capture a photograph of the bird, but it's just something entirely different to get a good photograph of the bird. You know, good composition, good environment that the bird is in. So uh, it's really, it's not only tough to cap to focus on them, to capture them, but it is rewarding when you actually capture a good photograph of a bird. Anyway, bird. Oh yeah. Now, birding in New Jersey, you might ask? Well, uh, birding in New Jersey and New York is actually pretty popular. It's an excellent, excellent place to bird because it's in the pathway of these ancient migratory lanes that birds use. So all the birds coming from the Caribbean going up to Canada actually pass through our area. So right now I'm in Garrett Park, which is in Patterson, New Jersey. And Garrett Park is actually some type of bird trap. So the birds pass by and see the city of Patterson. You know, when they're coming in, they migrate at night. So the birds will migrate at night, pass over Garrett Park here, and then see the city uh, as the sun rises, and they'll turn around and come back into the park. And in New York City, you have the same thing. So in so New York City, you get a uh, bird trap as well in Central Park because the birds will uh, fly past Manhattan and then realize that, you know, Central Park is the most green area. I think I'm lost. I hear a wood thrush. Listen, they... Eole, Eole. Let's get them. We've done pretty good at seeing birds. I don't know about how well we've done of capturing birds. Now the birds that everyone wants to see out here are the migrants, the ones that are only here for a couple of weeks. So for example, warblers. Warblers are these tiny neotropical birds that are, you know, they, they winter in the Caribbean and they're eventually gonna nest in Canada and they're only here for a couple of days, some of them. And so that's what everyone wants to see. Everyone wants to see these migrants that are only here for about a week or two. Now it's one thing to see them, it's another thing of course to again capture them on, in the camera. And third, the top tier, which is to get an artistic pretty picture of a bird, which I think I'm failing at, but... <laughs> hey, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Now the lens is big and it is a beast, but comparatively speaking to, you know, something that's a 400 millimeter Canon, the, that whole setup will be a little bit larger. Now another good useful feature of this guy for birding is it has image stabilization. Man, when you have it at 400, if you don't have that image stabilization on, the, the, it's hard to actually hold it really still on your subject. So with image stabilization, you're able to just, you know, be able to aim and fire on these birds, bird. So a couple of things on the lens. Uh, it has a switch for if you want to have the lens focus five meters and beyond, like ignore anything that's close. This is pretty useful if you want to just, you know, Make sure that the lens ignores things that are nearby, maybe fans in the stands or something like that if you're doing sports. Uh, but I was surprised that when you switch that off, when you have the full range, it gets pretty close. Like I can shoot, if I'm shooting at 100, I can shoot, you know, three feet, I could shoot my shoe. <laughs> and uh, you can get really close to uh, plant, like this little bush here. I don't know if you could see this little bush right here. I could just, you know, be very close to it and zoom in and use it almost as if it was a, you know, 56 millimeter or something. Now, annoyingly, the lens does have lens creep. They do provide a lock for it, but that means every anytime the lens is down, it will zoom and creep 
see if there it's locked and now it won't come down. Here's the lens creep. Uh oh, I just heard a woodpecker. Let's go get it. We got something. We got a couple of shots here and there. I'm just gonna apologize to all the bird photographers out there. I suck. I'm sorry, I suck. However, uh, there are some things I learned. Uh, as far as autofocus goes, you're gonna need to make sure you have manual focus available to you because you have to get through all these little branches. I actually have the camera set to manual focus and uh, but I use my back button focus to get me close. Back button focus is an autofocus, and then I can, if I need to manually focus, I can focus on the right branch that the bird is on. And there's enough depth of field at 5.6 that, you know, you're pretty much gonna get the bird if it's nearby. But it is frustrating. I check a lot of pictures. A lot of them are slightly off because I suck <laughs> and I'm learning, but, um, that's more user error than lens error. But if you get a bird that's super close up, man, the, the pictures look really great. But most of my pictures are pretty bad because the, the birds are far away and sometimes I don't really hit focus as well as I could have. I did get a shot of a cool cardinal, uh, you know, checking itself out in a mirror. I thought that was a pretty cool shot. <laughs> Anyway, I just wanted to share my first look, my first playing around with the 100 to 400. I'll be sure to do a full review of this guy. Again, thank you to B&H for letting us come out here and play. And, uh, you know, hanging out with the birds, hanging out with nature. All right, I'll see you guys next time.